My name is Sharifa, and I'm trying to forget my mother. Two friends from an island in the Caribbean set out on a journey to find inspiring stories told by the persons who live them. So with a camera back and an open mind, we learned that the best part of life is not the destination, but the journey. My mother was my first best friend. Um, I grew up in a household that could be compared to the Cosby Show. Um, we had a very close relationship. I shared all my secrets with my mother. Um, my mother was my problem solver. She was a problem, the person who I would go to with anything at all. Um, she has always been that rock in my life. She was my strength. Before there was anything like social media, um, my mother was the one who would always remember somebody's birthday. She had a trick to it in that she would have it written in a book that um, had her daily inspirations that she would read every day. So, on that particular day, she would write whoever's birthday it is and then call them and sing for them. She was a funny woman. She could make anybody laugh. And I remember that she used to buy the same shoe in different colors and then wear the different colors to work. Um, my mother had the purple hair before purple hair was a thing. You know, she was just funky and fun and full of life. Both my parents, I would say, had um, were, were best friends, and I think that is that's the first relationship that I saw that made me want something like that for myself. I could see the love between my mother and my father on a daily basis. You know, they showed it in every aspect of their lives. Um, my mother was adventurous you know um both of them so we would always she would you know get us up get me up in the morning and say all right we're gonna go here we're gonna go there i will just jump in the car and head wherever it is i remember going on a family vacation um this was with my husband and my two sons at the time. Both my parents were there as well. And I remember trying to explain to a cousin that my mother had recently started repeating things and he used to be understanding about it. I remember we were walking in a parking lot in a shopping mall and she had said something to my cousin. And maybe about five minutes after she said the same thing again. And he looks at me and he's like, oh, you know, I see what you're talking about. Um, I remember during that same trip, I was in the bathroom with my mother. And she said something which she had said a few minutes before. And I let her know that she had just repeated herself. And she got really upset. Um... I remember her saying, you know, listen Sharifa, this is something that is happening to me. You don't understand what it is that I'm going through. Um, if this is what I'm doing, allow me to do it. And we just had to try, both my father and I at that point, to understand that, okay, yes, she might be repeating things several times, but we're just going to have to let it go. My grandfather, I had suffered from dementia 
um, which we later found out was Alzheimer's. And I think it was at that point that, you know, the, the, the disease or the sickness of Alzheimer's came to mind. I was kind of hoping that, you know, maybe it was something like she, you know, like because she had retired, um, she wasn't exercising her brain enough or something like that. So I remember trying to give her things to do with it, be crossword puzzles, stuff like that. Um, you know, hoping that it was something, you know, as simple as that. Um, but it just continued to get worse. She was repeating stuff more and more um, until further on, you know, years started to pass and we realized that other things started happening. So it started off with her, as I said, just repeating stuff. Um, but she was still able to function normally otherwise you know still able to cook for herself do everything that she was doing prior um, and then you know you would have those instances where she would actually forget um, where she was possibly um, who she was in terms of being an adult uh, because there were times when she would be asking for her parents um, and then she would want to go to her parents so we had we had instances where um, she would she would try to leave the house um, you know, because she wanted to go and find where her parents were. She didn't know why she was where she was. Um, you know, she was with my, my father. Um, there are times when she referred to him as a co-worker. Um, she would introduce me to him as a friend. Um, I remember the first time that my mother tried to leave the house to go and walk to find her parents. Um, I'd been a stay-at-home mother for some time and I wanted to return to work. So I went for my first job interview and I remember, you know, feeling good about the interview and leaving the interview to get a phone call from my father to say that he couldn't find mommy, that mommy had left. And um, I remember having a conversation with God on my way home and saying, okay, is it that you are saying that I shouldn't go back to work? Um, mommy actually found herself back home. She walked home. Um, but that was the beginning of her trying to leave. Uh, shortly after, I gave birth to my daughter and it had been my mother's care caregiver. It had become a situation where I was not only looking after a newborn, but I was looking after my mother. It had gotten to the stage where she was no longer bathing. So this had now become my responsibility to bathe her. And I remember, you know, you're moving from child to mother. Luckily, I lived pretty close to her. So, um, doing these things um, in terms of distance was okay. It got really trying sometimes because I remember specifically one night I happened to be up breastfeeding. Um, it could have been maybe two o'clock in the morning and I got a call from my father saying that 
you know, my mother has packed up everything and is was angrily trying trying to leave the house. Um, he had no had to put a padlock on the front door um, so that she couldn't leave. But it had gotten so heavy for him that he was reaching out in the middle of the night. Um, I remember handing the baby over to my husband and driving to my parents' house where I had to try and keep my mother calm. I was trying to explain to her um, who she was, where she was. Uh, I was trying to explain to her that her parents had passed. Um, she didn't believe me. Um, I eventually got her to bed. Um, she she continued to do this almost on a daily basis. I remember that night dropping to my knees and calling out to God, you know, asking not only for help, but asking him why. My mother was a good woman. Um, why was she suffering the way she was? And in turn us. It's, it's, It's painful to be honest about my feelings about the situation. Um, I remember a specific, specific day when I, I had to bathe my mother because she had messed up herself. She was by my house. And um, because she had messed up herself and I wanted to bathe her quickly. Because I wanted to bathe her quickly. I remember that um, I had to put her in the shower without turning on the heater and um, <laughs> my mother wasn't used to bathing in cold water and or even if she was you know maybe she just didn't remember but I remember when I was bathing her and she started to cry out to God for help because this person who was bathing her in cold water was torturing her. And she was asking God, what have I done? Why is this happening to me? And I've lived with that thought of torturing her because it was torture. It's one of the memories that I carry. It became a part of my guilt. You know, I had people saying to me, Sharifa, you're doing a great job. But these were the stories that I didn't share. And it hurts me to think that even with me trying 
trying to do the best that I could. I somehow had her suffering. I remember having an honest discussion with my husband recently about the fact that you know when people have lost a loved one they usually say I remember this person on a daily basis it hasn't been the case for me I have this picture up of my mother I have two of them in my house and it's not something that I see it's not something that I take time to look at I do not remember my mother on a daily basis and that is because I try not to remember my mother unfortunately my memories are all of her being sick unless someone comes to me and starts to talk about her and what they remember about her what I fight with or what is in my head is the last few years of her life um, it I have no problems talking about her um, talking about the memories that people have as a matter of fact I, I encourage it I love hearing the stories but for me and for my dreams it's usually of her being sick I remember being upset with her for and this is since she has passed for not being around more I think I was hoping kind of dreaming that even though she wasn't here with me I would feel her presence more um, but it it hasn't happened or it hasn't happened as much as I would like it to happen yeah I'll have the days yes where I'll do something and I'll go oh that's my mother you know my mother would have said that or my mother would have done that but I wanted to feel her more I wanted to you know wake up every day and just feel her presence there uh, in in discussing this you know with my husband I was thinking that maybe the reason why I don't feel her as much is because it's my way of, of healing I don't know But it would be good to feel her sometimes. I have almost da daily fears that the same thing will affect me. I mean, it happened to my grandfather, my mother. Uh, so, you know, it would make perfect sense that it would also happen to me. Um, seeing what my father went through and knowing what I went through. I have always said to my family, listen, you know, if if we can afford it from day one, you know, put me in a home. I this is my wish. I would not wish this on anybody. I wouldn't want them to have to see me suffer the thought of not remembering them <laughs> that breaks my heart but yeah that's that's definitely what I'd want them to do these are these are today's emotions um, it has definitely gotten better I would say um, 
and as possibly because I try not to have her in the forefront of my mind. Um, which is possibly the wrong way to be dealing with this, but it's, it's how I get through. Um, but yeah, it's, that's, that's how I'm feeling today. I think for me, um, if we were able to at the time, um, I actually don't think I would have wanted to put her somewhere in any kind of facility unless it was absolutely necessary. Um, and yes, even though it was her wish, as I said, there was a time when I didn't mind taking care of her, you know, this was my mother um, and I was home. You know, even though I had my other children to take care of, this was something that I felt that I should be doing. So I have no regrets about doing that. I think I would have had more regrets if I did. You know, even though this was her wish, I would have had more regrets putting her in a facility. I've had friends who went through similar experiences who um, I remember one friend in particular who would share with me, you know, and she would say, boy, Sharifa, I see that, um, oh, she said, I don't know how you do it, you know, because this is really hard and I get really upset with my mother and, um, you know, I want to shout at her and whatever. And I remember just being honest with her and saying, listen, these are our normal feelings, you know, we are also going through this experience and um, so she herself, she was telling me how guilty she felt about um, the way she addressed her mother or things that happened with her mother. So I, I do believe that this is just something that we go through. I think I'm slowly slowly learning that I can't be too hard on myself. Uh, it was definitely worse right after she passed. And even though I saw her passing as somewhat of a release, my, my, normal emotions were just that they were normal and I wasn't giving myself you know enough credit to realize that this is just something that 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 people go through so I'm I'm slowly releasing I am slowly able to you know talk about things like this um, share the guilt that I felt um, but also try and move past it I'm getting there I know that we will definitely get to the point where we will speak about her and just the happy memories and my nightmares will be no wonderful dreams. My name is Sharifa and I'll never forget my mother.
This is King Shaladan, aka Z King. And this story is how I found out my first love has always been my only love. Bless.